Hello, uh, so we will discuss about shear force and bending moment diagrams today. So it is one of the important topic as far as the beams are concerned. So let us first define what the beams are. So beams are the structural members which which carry the transverse load. So whenever a, to a structure the transverse loads are applied, uh, the structure is called as structural member is called as a beam. So when the transform transverse load is applied the beams tend to deform about the uh, long about the lateral axis so uh, what does it tries to bend so this deformation produced by the transverse loads or due to the couples is called bending generally the bending happens in this way so if it is a deformed beam undeformed beam when the transverse load is applied when the transverse load is applied uh it deforms in this way so this is this is a deformed shape of a beam under that effect of transverse load so before we proceed further we need to understand what are the various types of loads a beam can carry the general uh, point load is a point load which is is subjected to a point so in this manner for example this is a point load at the center and a simply supported beam both the ends are simply supported and it is a point load so next we have a distributed load for example uh, the load distributed over a bridge or over a uh, roof structure so the load is generally the unif distributed so that distribution may be uniform may be uniformly varying or maybe a random distribution but uh, as far as the assumptions are considered we we generally go with the assumption that uh, the loads are distributed uniformly or the loads are distributed uniformly varying right so it, it, if it is if the load is uniformly distributed we can represent it like this okay so further we have the classification of beams on the basis of the type of support so first type of classification is a cantilever in a cantilever beam one of the end is fixed and the other end is kept free so that means you have this type of structure where we have a one end as a fixed end and the other end as a free end so at fixed end you will have three unknowns one is horizontal reaction other is vertical reaction and fixed end moment so uh, those will be the unknowns so what we generally have that pros and cons of each type of this classification so for example for cantilever beam we when the beam is loaded at one end the moment the moment at fixed end will be very high so it can break obviously it will break from the fixed end when the loads are being applied so but it has many advantages like it can use in you it may be used in traffic light cantilevers so they can have a remarkable span then you have parking canopies for example here so you can see the diag uh, figures representing the application of cantilever beams and obviously which i uh, just told you a fixed end can have three unknowns so it is horizontal reaction vertical reaction and a fixed end moment so you must have three unknowns at a cantilever beam or if at a fixed end then further classification you may you may uh, see for that of a simple support in a simple support beam both the ends are simply supported the ends are simply supported there are no supports in between only at the ends so in a simple support beam in general what we see is one end is pinned, pinned support which will have uh, two unknowns the other end is roller support which will have only one unknown and the displacement in other direction will be allowed so this is just to um, this is made in such a way that one end is both the ends are not pinned you know, so that the structure is the beam is not too rigid so it should have certain allowance to displace under the moisture thermal or or any unwanted loads so uh, if you see the geometric so uh, when we have a pinned joint we have two unknowns vertical reaction and horizontal reaction if we have a uh, roller support then we have a one unknown that is a vertical reaction so in in roller support only the translation in translation is prevented in vertical direction but 
displacement in horizontal direction is allowed so this type of beam we call it as a simply supported beam so further we have a uh, single overhang beam or a double overhang beam in general many uh, application we will see that the beams are hanging over a part on one side or both the sides so once the beam is freely supported at two points and having one end extended beyond the support then it is called single overhang for example in this this particular application you see that one of the end is uh, is extended beyond the support so it is a sim single overhang beam and in the other you can see that it is a hanging over extended towards both the sides so both the ends so you can see that it is a double overhang beam it is very important to realize the difference between the single overhang beam and double overhang beam and the conventional sim simply supported beams so what we have uh, as far as the process is concerned to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams it is exactly the same but there are a few points critical points such as point of contraflexure and zero moment and zero shear force points so those will be the characteristic feature of the overhanging beams as far as general scenario is concerned so uh, we will see some of these points well while doing the illustrations for uh, overhang beams right so uh, next next we we have another classification of fixed beam in in a fixed beam a fixed or built-in beam has both the ends rigidly fixed so that the slope at the ends remains zero such a beam is also called as an cast beam and you can represent a fixed end beam like both the ends are fixed both the ends are fixed so it in this what what we mean a fixed end will have three unknown one is horizontal horizontal direction vertical direction and a fixed angle moment so we have this uh, three unknown at this end and three unknown at this end so therefore this this uh, fixed beam problem will become an actually an indeterminate problem so uh, we then the next cl classification we can see here is we can have many intermediate supports many supports at various points so like in railway bridges or the river bridges or the flyovers so these are these type of structures are actually considered as a continuous beams so you have the continuous supports at uh, specific intervals so this will be treated as a continuous beam the characteristic feature of a continuous beam is that you have certain supports which are at end so these will be called as end supports these will be called as end supports and you have these supports which are in between these will be treated as intermediate support okay so these are few classifications how we define the supports how we define the beams and uh, how uh, they can be classified depending upon the type of support or depending upon the uh, type of load so you can have a point load you can have a distributed load you can have cantilever beam you can have um, simply supported beam you can have simply supported beam with overhang simply supported beam without overhang uh, with single overhang with double overhang and uh, fixed beam and continuous beams so we we shall look for uh, shear force and bending moment diagram of these so before proceeding further i think we shall def define now what is a shear force and what is a bending moment so it is very important to see at its at the definitions so shear force shear force is nothing but it is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces acting to the left or the right of the section it is very important to pay attention to this definition acting to left or right of the cut section so when you you take a section at any point and take the forces either to left or right of this and take their algebraic sum okay so this this is very important that you have to take the algebraic sum means you have to take care of the uh, forces which are acting upward or downward and you take their algebraic sum on one side either on the left side or on the right side along the span of the beam 
so once you because we have to take the algebraic sum it is very important to specify the sign convention so let us say we are having a section somewhere here okay so shear force is considered positive when the resultant of the force is to the left of the section is upward yani ki jo left of the section mein jo forces hain wo agar upward aa rahi hain so that will be considered positive or to the right downwards to right mein agar downward forces hain so they will be considered positive so this is this is a process of sign convention which i follow the center line indicates the section plane अगर सेक्शन प्लेन के लेफ्ट में फोर्सेस अपवर्ड्स हैं दे विल बी कंसीडर्ड पॉजिटिव और अगर डाउनवर्ड हैं तो दे विल बी कंसीडर्ड नेगेटिव सेक्शन प्लेन के राइट right साइड में अगर फोर्सेस डाउनवर्ड हैं तो वो पॉजिटिव होंगी अपवर्ड हैं तो वो नेगेटिव होंगी सो प्लीज सी दैट वी आर क्लियर अबाउट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ शेयर फोर्स एंड इट्स साइन कन्वेंशन ठीक है सो नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज बिकॉज वी हैव शियर फोर्स एंड बेंडिंग मूवमेंट इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू डिफाइन व्हाट इज बेंडिंग मूवमेंट एंड व्हाट इज शियर फोर्स सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिफाइंड व्हाट शियर फोर्स इज एंड व्हाट साइन कन्वेंशन वी विल फॉलो फर्दर व्हाट वी वी विल लुक एट व्हाट बेंडिंग व्हाट इज द बेंडिंग मूवमेंट सो बेंडिंग मूवमेंट इज इट इज द एल्जेब्रिक सम ऑफ द मूवमेंट ऑफ द फोर्सेज टू द लेफ्ट और राइट ऑफ द सेक्शन टेकन अबाउट द सेक्शन सो first of all the moment is always force into perpendicular distance so we take the force suppose this is a section and we have these forces so taken we will take the section and moment about this section from all the forces whichever forces are acting right either to left or right of the section so here i have shown from right of the section ठीक है, सो दिस इज द बेंडिंग मोमेंट एंड साइन कन्वेंशन फॉर दिस वी विल फॉलो इस बिकॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द बेंडिंग मोमेंट द बीम विल हैव ए टेंडेंसी टू सैग ओके सैग और ए डिफो सो दिस इज कॉल्ड दिस इज कॉल्ड सैगिंग दिस इज कॉल्ड होगिंग वी विल से सैगिंग मोमेंट इज पॉजिटिव ओके द सेम साइन कन्वेंशन वी कैन सी इन दिस वे इफ यू हैव ए कटिंग प्लेन और ए सेक्शन प्लेन the clockwise moment to the left of the section is considered positive okay and anti clockwise moment to the right of the section is considered positive so this is the way how we can represent the uh, bending moment so please see shear force and bending moment how they are defined they are nothing but the algebraic sum of the uh, shear force as well as the algebraic sum of the moment of forces taken towards left or right of the section theek hai aur sign convention mein shear force is considered positive when it is upward to the left of the section and downward to the right of the section bending moment is considered positive when it is when it is anti clockwise anti clockwise to the left of the section and uh, when it is anti bending moment is considered positive when it is clockwise for the left of the section and anti clockwise for the right of the section okay so i hope this this makes clear the definition of the shear force and bending moment diagram thank you very much